Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. A lot of you guys have asked for an update on the uh, Apex Concrete Garage conversion that I've done. Um, originally, when I started this project, there was no information online on how to do this. So I decided to do lots of video blogs and videos um, to help you guys out. So I'm going to go through some comments that have been left on the multiple videos that I've made. I have combined all the part videos into one. Um, so if you would like to watch that, please do so. I will put a link in the description box for you to watch. It's about an hour and 40 minutes in total length. Um, it's not the great filming, greatest filming in the world, but hopefully it gives you a good idea on how to do this. And that's ultimately why I did the video. Um, I did it during the winter. It was very cold. So, you know, forgive my shaky hands on the filming. Um, as you can appreciate, it was snowing. Uh, I think it was 2018 I did it. Uh, we still got to finish the project because we still got the uh, garage door to insulate and do a little bit more on the right wall at the bottom. I'll show you that in a bit. Um, but ultimately, I'm short on money, so um, you know I'm still paying this project. It cost me about five and a half thousand pound in total, including the equipment. Um, it's about four thousand pound for the actual build itself. Um, and mainly, you know, um, insulation board, plywood, um, wood, tools, it all adds up. You might not think it costs much, but when you start adding things up, this is materials only. I'm not factoring in, into my labour costs. If I was to factor my labour costs, it'd probably be closer to eight to ten thousand pounds. Anyway, there's lots of comments being made on a lot of my videos. Um, I will put a link uh, to my PayPal account if you'd like to chip me a couple of quid just to say thank you for doing this for you. Um, the reason I did this is there were no information online. Um, I found a Compton video, um, sorry, a Compton website with uh, two pictures, um, a vague description of how to do it, and that was it really. Um, you can buy Compton brackets. I don't think they're available at the moment, but you can buy some cheaper ones. I will show you a close-up of these. Essentially, to uh, mount the wood up, to the, the, the concrete panels you need some of these um, brackets and some of these long bolts these are just basic roofing bolts um, I'll show you what that looks like closer up in a minute but I want to go through all the comments that's been made on my videos because many of you guys have been interested in what I've done here and I do appreciate um, your nice comments I will go through it as best as I can to try and highlight any concerns or questions you may have had regarding how I went about building this. I think the video in general answers most of the questions, but I thought I'd do a bit of an update just so you guys get an idea of, um, you know, my processes anyway. So someone called James Bond, um, that's an interesting name, isn't it? Hey, nice work. Is it possible to have the link for the stud wall to concrete brackets you use, please? So. I, I actually have do, done a video on costs, if you want to check that out. Um, I'll put a link in the description box if you want to see that specifically. But I went through the various costs and I also put links in the description box to the eBay listings. Um, so essentially, about 20 of these set me back about £25, which were a lot cheaper than the Compton brackets, which um, didn't have as many holes in them as this did. And I think there were 12 for 25 pounds so they were quite expensive so I sourced these off eBay and uh, they did the job basically uh, Kevin Moore um, hi thanks for doing the great videos um, I'm about to embark on a similar project for a gym for our garage and have encountered the same problem of attaching the 3.2 joists um, I'm not sure what you're referring to there uh, Kevin but essentially, what you're going to do is put a bracket on. Uh, you need two, basically two brackets to hold the wood. So it's, it's like that. And then you put the roofing bolt through that goes through your concrete uh, panels. Um, you need longer ones because the ones on there are quite short. Um, but don't worry about your walls falling down because um, they're designed to be interlocking. In, 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 in reality... Um, the concrete panel garages don't need these roofing bolts in because they don't hold the structure together. Uh, they're just there as a temporary stop stop gap, really. But these are something that you can use. So go and get yourself some. I think these are 120 mil 
um, in terms of length and you can always cut them down if they're too long um, get some nice um, square nuts um, and that's how you attach your um, battens to, to the walls uh, Daniel Hodgson top job wondering if I can pay you to do mine in the South Manchester once all this COVID-19 is over well um, Daniel I don't know if I'd want to embark on this project again because it was bloody hard work um, lifting the actual um, plywood panels on your own that is 2.4 meters by 1.2 meters to put on the roof um, was hard work um, you know I'm not a weightlifter I'm not built like a, a you know Hulk Hogan uh, or Arnold Schwarzenegger um, so this job if you're just an average person like me may be a bit of a challenging task my recommendation is get someone to help you out um, unfortunately I didn't have anyone who was willing to help even work colleagues weren't willing to help so um, I had to do it all on my own so that's why it took me over a year to do um, but get, get some help is my advice um, but thank you for the offer um, you know if um, I've got some free time at some point I may consider that and come and help you um, I certainly would be interested in possibly filming it um, so you know keep in touch we're, we're waiting to see what ha happens with COVID-19 it's going to be a long long process this many people are out of work um, so money is tight for everyone I guess so you know you know just keep in touch you know I'm more than happy to give you any advice you need uh, okay so Anthony can you share the link of the brackets you found on eBay also what millimeter wood did you use for the battens cheers now I believe it was 45 by 70 millimeter battens I got them from Wix's um, they were relatively cheap I think they were something like five or six pound each but then I, I probably used about 30 of those and then obviously another 30 in, in the floor as well um, so the buttons I basically uh, used on the floor, as you can see in the video, um, and then insulated it in between the gaps. Um, and the same is true of, of you know, the walls. Um, and obviously I attached the plywood and the uh, insulation to the rafter uh, wood pieces that go down the length of the, um, the uh, garage. So hopefully that gives you an idea of um, the buttons that I used. So someone called zero zero electro zero zero. What are the dimensions of the brackets from eBay, please? As I got a consumer unit installed to do in a garage, and this would be perfect, please. Was the wood two by four? Um, as I said, I believe it was um, forty mil by seventy mil. Um, I think they're about twenty five mil in thickness, something like that. Um, relatively cheap as I said but I put links in that in that um, cost video please check that out all the links are in there so if you want to go to Wix's go on to that video click on the link and order the products don't worry I'm not affiliated with Wix's so I won't see anything from that um, but as I said it will cost a lot of money to do this project <clears throat> but as for these I think they're about one and a half inch wide by about four inch long something like that they're not very big and they're not expensive they're only about 20 of them for about 25 pound um, I did originally get some Compton brackets which were 12 um, they were a bit shorter uh, for about 25 pound but then I found these they're pre-drilled this this is galvanized as well so it won't rust um, but then again providing it's not near damp it shouldn't rust anyway but they're brand new, so um, for that sort of money, you can't really complain. So Chaz Combies um, says, The wooden buttons you have put up, I have done the same in my garage for shelving. Question, what did you paint them with to help protect the wood? Like a sealer, uh, would wood treatment against damp be worth it? Cheers. Yeah, you can use treated wood, um, but it's a lot more expensive, about three or four times more expensive. Um, and to be honest with you I didn't even think about that when I was uh, buying the battens and putting them up and then later on I thought hmm I should have really treated the wood really um, and you can use various types to uh, treat the wood I think there's that curacao 
stuff that you can buy which is based on tar which isn't ideal for indoor use just remember that there is a big difference between outdoor use and indoor use um, and then there's um, you know various compounds that protect wood against the elements um, so you can treat the wood after the fact it's just it takes a bit of time for the stuff to soak in and you want to put in about two or three coats and, and give it about a week to dry off because it will take a long time to dry off before you think about putting them up uh, because the wood will be damp and you need it to dry out um, but yeah treat the wood and hopefully that will protect you against damp and um, you know hopefully that was helpful to you Dave K0974 what is the span between your battens I'm going to do my own garage um, my support post uh, 4x6 part uh, do you apply sheet uh, bow inwards if you lean on them um, to be honest not really um, if I'm honest with you the more battens that you put in between the more support you give to your plywood and you know what, I did experience a problem with plywood bowing, if I'm honest with you. Uh, if you've got big pieces like so, and they're not stored in the best way, yes, the plywood can bow inwards or outwards. Um, obviously, putting them like with the bow like that against the wall and then uh, screwing it in should straighten it out. However, having really long pieces can make it really difficult. And to be honest with you, um, if I'm honest, the buttons were too far apart, if I'm honest with you. And I did experience a problem with um, that wall in particular, where the uh, wood was bowing. So what I ended up doing is I got some wood glue, put it behind the actual um, plywood, and got that to stick against the actual insulation boards. And then I got a piece of wood and put it, braced it against this wall. And pushed it in and let it uh, set over 24 hours and believe it or not it's held in place it hasn't moved uh, which is fantastic uh, because I was a bit annoyed at that so I think the biggest diff um, distance is about 1.5 meters um, on this back wall they're probably only about that far apart the actual battens so you know it's not a big deal on the back wall at all because obviously I put lots of mounting areas for the TV you see and I wanted to make sure it was strong on that wall, so I put extra bat uh, battens um, to secure um, potentially, you know, the wall um, against anything falling off. So that's more or less how I address that. But yeah, you're absolutely right. You need to have lots of um, battens, um, you know, to try and screw in the plywood against the wall. Um, but um, you know, in hindsight, I would have put a lot more battens against the wall um, because you know the plywood does bow unfortunately unless it's stored flat and it's been flat for, for some time like over a year um, the best way of combating the, the, the plywood bowing is to, is to have smaller pieces um, and, and have your battens only so far apart I wouldn't say more than a meter apart um, ideally um, but you know, hopefully that addresses the, the issue regarding plywood bowing. Um, Dale Accounting, how does this play with the building regs norms in, in case you get uh, approval? I believe, although I'm no expert on legal matters regarding building code, but if it's uh, a place that's not going to be um, cohabitated, such as sleeping in, living in, and it's separate to your house, you should be okay with the building regs. It's only if you ended up trying to sublet this out to, for someone to live in say you, you got it fully insulated it was nice and warm and you said to your best mate oh you can live in my garage then I believe believe the building regs would come into effect then so you need to be mindful of legal uh, regulations um, especially if someone's co um, cohabitating the actual space to live in say if you put a bed in the end they were living in here more or less full time or renting you giving you a bit of rent money um, so you need to be mindful of that. Uh, Raf97, thanks for these videos, will be helpful once I get my garage built. One question I have is, how did you get the electric cable into the garage since you can't drill through the walls? Did the armoured cable come through under the base? 
Well, this garage actually is a new garage that was um, put in place to rip down an old existing garage. So they just basically made it wider and a bit longer. This garage is five meters wide by seven meters long. Um, and there was already an existing cable going underneath the ground, but sure, um, if you were going to get a new garage, you certainly would want armored cable coming into the garage to provide power. Um, Gobs Garage, that's uh, his name. Thanks for these videos, very little on the net about this. Looking to do the same thing. Got quoted 3.5 grand to have some uh, someone do this for me. So doing it myself. To be honest with you, uh, Goz, uh, 3.5 grand sounds quite cheap, if I'm honest with you. Um, I'd snap his hand out to, off, to be honest. That's a bargain. Um, like I said, I spent at least four grand on this. But it's a, I suppose it depends on the size of the garage. Um, so, you know, to be honest with you, given the money I spent on this, I only originally thought this might cost me, stupidly thinking it might only cost me a thousand pound to do. Um, I would snap his hand off and say, yeah, do it for me, no problem. That is a good price, to be honest with you. Um, hopefully, um, the cost won't go above that. But knowing builders, as I do know, they uh, could easily ramp that up another two grand on top of that um, and say, listen, it's going to cost more. So you need to be careful when you're choosing your builders. Uh, Rubster 760. The room is coming along quite well. Uh, what kind of pool table are you looking at putting in? Well, this is a, a prince's table. It's a seven foot. It, this is a UK English table. Um, that's pretty nice, I think. Um, this is one I got second hand off eBay, actually, for £500. Um, and this is beach. Beach is really expensive. I think the beach one's brand new, uh, around fifteen hundred pound. Um, so I think I got myself a bargain. Luckily, I got one on eBay. I was more than happy to hold on to it for me um, for six months while I got my garage fit done. Believe it or not, I bought this before I got my garage done. So um, I was really um, happy that he was willing to hold on to it to me. I think. Ultimately, I think the reason he did that was because I was going to cancel the order and he said, oh, no, 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 let, let me keep it, hold of it for you for a while. Because um, I don't think he wanted to lose the sale. So, yeah, this is a Prince's beach table and it's uh, quite nice, I think. John Lever, have you had any issues with damp? I noticed at the end of the, your roof bars that the uh, gives the, there's moisture. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um problem I've got is there's a, a building behind this house and this garage that dumps all its water off their roof into my garden. Um, I've tried approaching the landlord and saying, listen, you need to do something about it, um, but he doesn't seem that interested. Um, ultimately, he should be responsible for water coming off his roof. Um, and yeah, it, there is a bit of damp, if I'm honest with you. Hopefully that won't be an issue long term. Um, hopefully the uh, landlord will, will see sense and think, yes, I need to do something. Um, but I'll let you know how that goes on. Uh, crazy Flips Kid, can I ask uh, why you use plywood instead of plasterboard or aquaboard? I'm not sure what aquaboard is, but plasterboard would be susceptible to damp. Um, the thing with plywood is it's very resistant to dampness, damp. Um, and Yes, you can use OBS as well, but uh, plywood seems to be the best material out there at um, dealing with damp in garages. So I would highly recommend using plywood over any, any other material. Michael Chapman says, what thickness insulation board did you use? Now I use 40 mil. I didn't want to use 50 or 100 mil because I would have lost some, some of the size of the garage. And like some people have decided to use, use 25 mil. And I can understand why, because they want to retain as much size in the garage as possible. Because once you start putting insulation on, your battens, your, your plywood, you know, you're probably losing about that much on e each wall. Um, so it makes your room smaller. You need to keep that in, keep that in mind. But if you, it depends where you live. You know, if you're living in California, I think 25 mil would be fine. But if you're living in Alaska, you might want your uh, 100 mil, but in the UK, I've gone for a 40 mil. 
you know you could go for 50 mil which tends to be quite often used in housing um so that's the reason why i went for 40 millimeters right what else um malcolm x can't you use plastic ball mate thanks for the video as i've said um you know i want to use plywood because it's resistant to moisture uh dan owen can't believe this guy hasn't had more views he's the only one showing us what to do uh nice one fella yeah to be honest with you when i started off doing this project i couldn't find any videos on how to do it um i think there was a a conversion done for an office that I found but it didn't really go in depth in how they did it. it just showed you what the end project was and I just found a, a website with two pictures uh, in reference to Compton garages and that were it um, wasn't very helpful so this is why I did this I thought I'm gonna help people on YouTube do what I've done um, I haven't completely finished granted and I will address some of these questions and sh give you a bit of a tour um, in a moment but I wanted to go through your questions and your comments and hopefully uh, you find this video informative Dave K0974 hi again uh, any chance of a pick or follow up of how you finish the ceiling linings around the steel trusses please my conversion is coming along now it's all your fault of course well I'm, I'm sorry about that Dave but <laughs> I, I know hopefully these videos are helping you out a little bit um, I do want to inform everyone on how to go about doing it. It's not easy. It takes a lot of work, granted, but it will be worth it in the long run. You know, ultimately, I've got a nice pool table I can play on if I get a bit bored. You know, you know, and if you're, a, you know, someone who wants to do it professionally, I suppose this would be fantastic for practice. Um, I would have preferred a bigger garage to have a snooker table in here. That would be fantastic, but. Alas, I've only got what I've got, you know. So, yeah, my, my conversion is coming along, he says. All your fault. But um, I'm unsure how to make the steel wood transition look good. Uh, great inspiration. I'm going to convert our double Compton slab garage soon. It's just big enough to get a full-size UK table in. So, I, as I said, this is a 7-foot table. You can get 8-foot tables and 9-foot tables. 9-foot is regulation American pool tables. 8 foot is like a in between that you can get away with if you're into the American size. Um, so it's just big enough for a full size UK table uh, to, and big enough to still use 57 inch cubes. As I said, it's re really short on that side. So if I just get a regulation cube, which is 57, and I just put it there, hopefully you can see, I'm hitting the wall there and there isn't much queuing distance. Ideally, I'd want to be able to queue here, but because it's hitting the wall, what you have to do is make it a bit smaller. And I do have some smaller queues. If you bear with me, um, I will show you what I mean. Hopefully this will be helpful. Um, uh, I just want to show you the different types of queues you can get, you know, to fit in smaller spaces. Um, here we've got some cues. I just want to go through this quickly because I think it's important. Um, some of them are high quality. This is this is a Canon 48 inch cue, um, and it has the option of being being a lot smaller. So again, if I try and hit the wall there, you can see. Hopefully, you can see that in the video. But th there's a bit of queuing room there, so that is perfect for this size of room. Um, Obviously, this is a one-piece um, Peridon Hamilton Q. This is one piece, 48 inch again, same size. Um, this is um, one of those special three-piece cues. I think this is a Canon one. Um, it's about with two ends, not like the camera manufacturer. Um, and again, what you can do is you can unscrew the butt off, you know, and if you want to make it a bit shorter. So, uh, that's interesting for using um, if you've got limited space, you know, because obviously it is 57 inch long. And then what you can do is pick up these old, um, uh, you know, um, one, two, three, four piece cues. Um, you know, they're, they're very cheap. You can pick them up like next to nothing on eBay. 
And the advantage is, obviously, you can see it's, it's 57 inch long, but then you can start unscrewing bits off, like so, and make it shorter, you know, make it even shorter if you wanted to, you know, take that off as well. And, and they're really nice, these old cues, you know, that, that, were, that came out in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, obviously, everything is a bit more modern these days with the, um, you know, various di different types of cues. Um, I think um, I'll just show you the more expensive ones. Hang on a minute. Hopefully, uh, you won't get too bored. Um, we've got specialist um, cues here where we've got, this is a player's one, um, and this is Canadian maple, um, and they tend to be more expensive. These are about, I don't know, 70, 80, 90 pound. You can import them from Germany or America or Canada, um, and this doesn't split. They are quite large for this room though, so the only way I can use these is at the ends, you know, where I've got a bit of queuing room. And in this this one here is it's got a, a, a special phonetic uh, tip at the end um, with hard leather. It's it's a, it's a different type of um, tip. I don't know if I can show you that in the video. Hopefully this will be informative. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but this one's a lot shorter tip, and that's a, a longer plastic tip. Um, but this this is actually 26 ounces long, uh, how do you mean? And it does split into three sections as well. So you could actually use this as a masse cue, you know, for masse shots. Um, because it's 26 ounces and it's got a different type of tip at the end, I'll, I'll just hit this ball. Hopefully you can hear it. If you hear that sound, slightly different. This is the player's cue. We'll do that again. Sounds different, doesn't it? So with this tip, it is a lot harder. And it means you can hit bricks with a lot of power. And that's the reason why you have different types of cues. But I just wanted to show you how to get around the uh, size problems that you can experience in small garages. That you don't have to have a 57 inch cue. You can get smaller ones. As I said, I've spent quite a lot of money on different size cues, um, so I've got options there um, if you know, you're know you in a tight space or let's say you've got a room in the house that's really small and you're wondering how can I get around the size of my room and you can do that by getting smaller cues. Um, you can obviously buy some really cheap ones, let's get reach it. This is a 36 inch cue. Uh, designed for children, but if you've got a really small room, you could get away with that as well. So that's 36 inch. Um, they're, they're really cheap, I've got a load of them for about £20, you know, they're not expensive. So, um, so that addresses the size of the queues. If you've got a small space, you can get um, different size queues and use them um, in your room if you've got a small room or a small garage or even a shed or, you know if you've got a large shed you could probably get away with the small cues as well so let's uh, continue um, as I said I'll address the the metal supports of uh, the roof after I've gone through all these questions because someone has asked how did I line them up against the metal supports and um, one thing I will say is Garage builders are not very good at getting things square because they don't care, because it doesn't matter. Um, in a house it matters because they have to line walls up with, with brick and it has to be straight and square. But in a garage, they're not bothered about that. So it can be difficult to try and get things to fit. Just remember that. Um, so let's continue. Um, did you leave the walls bare or filled and painted? Yeah, I just left the, the walls bare. I didn't bother painting them. Um, to be honest, plywood was pretty good. If you're referring to the actual concrete panels, I didn't really do anything with the concrete panels either. Just left them bare. Um, I've left the wood bare. Sure, you could put some varnish on, and that might help with the moisture. Um, but I, I just decided to leave it as is. You know, I've done enough work, I think, on it. 
um, and I just had enough really. You can appreciate it after a long time of spending a year doing it. Um, Leighton 7430. I asked that the dimensions of the garage to go with the quote price please, just wondering if it's similar size to mine. Well, as I said, it's about 5 metres wide by 7 metres long. Um, and that's probably the smallest you probably could get away with unless you wanted to start using some really small cues. Um, ideally, I think having a double garage in width would be great for this because then you have plenty of queuing room. You could even probably get away with a snooker table or a nine foot American table. Or if you couldn't quite get a nine foot American table to fit, you could get an eight foot American table. And the main differences between the American and UK tables are the, the curved into the pockets the UK tables where the American ones are pretty straight and it's very easy to pot into the bottom pockets but difficult in the middle pockets in the American tables but in the UK tables it's a bit easier for the middle ones but more difficult in the bottom ones so so that's the main difference really between the, the dif difficultness of American versus UK I've modified this table by grinding the actual um, um, MDF board where the balls ro run down and I think it was about that thick and I've sort of grinded it down so it's a bit sm thinner that means I can get American balls to drop in here and they basically drop into a basket once I remove the coin mechanism out because American balls will run through that system you can get um, snooker balls to run through that but the only thing is not all the balls will fit. I think you'll just have one ball that won't, won't go down. Best thing to do is put all the balls except the black, then push it in and let all the balls run to the bottom here, then pop the black, and then all your balls will fit through the system. No problem. American balls are more difficult because they're bigger. So basically, UK balls are 2 inch in size, um, snooker balls are 2 and 16 inch, and American balls are 2 inch and a quarter. Um, let me just get some balls for you. I think this might help to try and give you an idea. Um, I just want to go through everything that everyone's been asking. Um, you know, the, the differences between the balls. So we've got UK ball, um, snooker ball, and American ball. You know, there is a bit of a difference in the um, two inch and the snooker ball, um, but a massive difference in the American ball. Um, but I just wanted to discuss the sizes of balls as well uh, because I wanted to be able to use all the ball sizes on this table. Um, but I've done a video to address that, so please check that one out. You know, as I've done, as I said, I've done many videos. So as I said, the dimensions is five meters by seven meters. Uh, right, John Lever, how did you address the raised floor and ceiling? The door against it. Um, well, I haven't sealed the door against um, because I've only used about five and a half meters of the length of this garage. So there still is a little bit of workshop area at the end, so I can use my tools and do various projects there without, um, you know, it without disturbing the the pool table area. Um, so again, I haven't sealed anything yet. That is a project I will end up doing at some point. My plan with that is to probably put a fake wall like I've done on all these um, you know, um, panels and, and put that against the garage door once I've got a side door installed and that will make this room more secure as well. Um, you know, because security is an issue you need to think of. When you've got all this stuff in here, you don't want someone stealing anything. Uh, one thing I did do is I did replace the, uh, uh, something I've not addressed um, in my videos really, uh, I should have spent more time on that was I decided to rip out the single pane glass window and install a small PVC window um, just to make it more secure it's double glazed you see so um, it should keep this room a lot warmer we obviously we've got a heater installed and um, once we address the garage door and the area that I've not completely finished it will be a lot warmer in here but the, the whole the majority of the garage is done and insulated um so let's carry on with these questions that you've been having um okay uh so that was john lever how do you address the raised floor and sealing the door against it 
Um, one thing I'll just say, I've done I've done the a battened um, linked together um, floor with 18mm plywood on the top um, and that was to address the fact that it was quite a damp floor as you may have said in, in a, some previous question um, <clears throat> and I decided to insulate the floor uh, we've got a moisture barrier um, sheet down first on top of that we've got our battens you know um, squared off the, the probably about so big in squares then I used some XPS um, board um, foam that went down first and on top of that I, I put some styrofoam um, you know um, polyurethane foam whatever they call it relatively cheap and that gives extra insulation as well so that's more or less how I, I, I built the floor really yes you could use some sort of floating floor use um, chipboard on, on top of say your, your insulation boards you can get away with that no problem the problem i had was the weight of this table it's going to be very heavy it's slight don't forget um so you need a strong support for that and that's why i decided to go ahead and do uh, a battened floor rather than do a floating floor <clears throat> um jeff jeff uh, jefferson uh, batista hopefully i pronounced that properly how did you spend uh, from, oh, I think he's asking how much I spent. So as I said, I've spent about £4,000 on the insulation and about £1,500 on the pool table equipment. Um, you know, I've done a video all about the costs. So I recommend you go and check that video out because I've got all the links in the description box um, in that video. You know, watch that and you all the links are there to ebay you know some people have asked for links regarding these uh, brackets and the roofing bolts um all the the information is on there and if the links don't work just go on ebay and do a search you'll be able to find these things quite easily um they do not cost much money i think for a pack of 20 of these it was about 20 pound and as i said about 20 of these were 25 pound um, but I'll show you the close up in the video after I've gone through everything. Ray S, if I were you, I would block off what you have uh, done with a partition with a door in it. You would still have your workshop and save yourself some money. No need to insulate the door. Good job. Um, I did think about that. That was an idea. I was going to put another blocked wall. Um, the thing is, that would only give me about four or five meters in length of this garage because it's not that long it's only seven uh, meters long um, I decided to not do that and at some point I'll probably block off the uh, the steel door because a lot of cold will come through that steel door um, and it also gives the option if at some point the house needed to be sold and we needed to take that wall down and leave it as a working garage um, we're not doing anything to the garage that can't be rectified later you see but um, when I've got the funds to do that I will do that and I'll do some more videos on that um, but that may be sometime down the road as I've said it cost me a fortune to do this just remember it's not cheap um, even one of, the, one of the comments was oh too much work really nice job but uh, I don't want to go to all that trouble I can understand that um, I didn't think this would be this difficult, if I'm honest with you. So, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, you, if, if you want to achieve something, you have to put the work in. Um, and it, I suppose good motivation to get something like this done by watching someone else do it. Um, so, like I said, I hope these videos are helpful to you guys. Uh, Stephen Naylor, why didn't you insulate the front part of the garage? Surely heat will be lost. You're absolutely right, uh, Stephen. I will lose quite a lot of heat out the door um, but that's I, I, in my mindset I've got I'm thinking about putting the side door in at some point and you know I, I don't want to do something that would inhibit my ability to do that you know surely I, I could do that all in one go um, but then access to the garage is limited you know if I was to start you know building something um, 
And in, in essence, we need a side door so we can get in and out so then I can start working on, on that back wall. And, and then probably do a stud wall, um, insulated with plywood. And then that would keep this room warm because I must admit it is a bit cold. Um, right, let's see what else has been said. Um, yeah, Stephen also said uh, just doing three quarters of the garage, making it all a bit pointless because you're losing heat. Well, yes, I am losing some heat. Um, and, you know, I, I've got two heaters in here. It does get c quite cosy in here once the heating's, heaters are, are get, get going. Um, but yeah, I certainly want to address the garage door because that Andy Nixon has said have you had any damp problems and did you put any vents in plus hope you can continue the series No, I didn't um, Andy. Um, I did think about it But I just wanted to get the whole garage insulated as much as possible and I worked on the insulation boards um, a bit of advice when handling insulation boards is get a mask and some goggles um, because this stuff gets into your lungs and it's not good stuff, it's nasty stuff. So my recommendation is please um, wear some protection and gloves as well because it does sort of put rashes on your hands and some people are allergic to the stuff as well. So, you know, um, yeah, the thing is with... Um, concrete garages you're always going to get damp you're not going to completely um, get rid of it but we can mitigate somehow in, in some instances by by putting insulation material in um, to try and you know mitigate that damp that that is coming through and obviously with me insulating the uh, floor as much as possible with various types of foams that will obviously help a lot you do get a lot of damp coming through concrete and that's why it's very important to have a moisture barrier sheet put down first because that will help um, believe it or not a thin piece of plastic will help tremendously um, and it should help st stop damp rising up through through the actual wood and rotting the wood the last thing we want to do is damage the support structure for this pool table which weighs a lot so, K Price, hi there. Finally, someone who's taken on the challenge of fitting out a sectional garage and turning it into a useful playroom. After watching the number of video clips, I realised there was a complete video to view. Yes, I com I had a lot of problems trying to combine all the videos into one as I didn't have a great internet connection. Uh, it took me a while to put that together. But now we've got a complete video, which is 1 hour and 40 minutes. Um, if you just search for the HD video that, that I've done, it's labelled HD full, I think. Um, that's the whole thing, basically. All, all the parts put into one. Uh, I clicked on it and I've just stopped watching it at 38 minutes and 44 seconds to send you this uh, message. I can see that you've had some problems along the way and having to decide the best way to solve them. That's the beauty of DIY. Uh, it gets you thinking and exercising that grey matter. You're doing well. Thank you, Kate. That's really, really nice of you to say that. Um, as I said, it's uh, been a long haul to get this done. Um, I have been trying to do these videos to help people because the thing that frustrated me the most was there was nothing on YouTube about doing this. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And I thought, well, if no one else is going to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, the only thing I found was a Compton website with two photos and a brief description. That was useless, absolutely useless to me. I don't even know why you even bothered putting that article up in the first place. Because it didn't help me at all. Um, so, I just thought, right, I'm going to do it on my own. Hopefully, and do a video vlog as I do it. Um, many people wouldn't have bothered doing that and just got on with it but I thought why don't I do something to help everyone out there you know give something back to the YouTube community um, you know I do earn a lot from YouTube but I do earn a tiny bit and um, I thought well let me do something for you guys because obviously uh, you obviously watch my photography stuff some of you guys do and if you didn't know already 
I do some lens reviews and camera reviews of the equipment I've got and uh, you know I do wildlife photography check that check those videos out if that's something that interests you um so Lee Kuti says bud good job this is extremely helpful I have a five meter by seven meter so you've got the same size garage as me um, so you should be able to do this quite easily uh, prefer fab garage and didn't find anything as useful as this until now yes as I said I didn't find anything on YouTube uh, when I started this in 2018 and I decided to do it myself I did a video blog as I, did, as I did it as I went along incurred a massive credit card bill for doing it still paying that off at the moment but I'm almost getting there to the point where this project will be finished um, you know it's been difficult difficult um, complicated um, you know issues with deliveries getting cement concrete plywood in short supply um, you know the materials are not cheap so my recommendation for anyone who is on a budget just do it a bit at a time just spend a couple hundred pound here and there and uh, do it you know bit by bit but then again there might be some of you out there who just want to get it done as soon as possible and we'll go out and get a loan to pay it off because if I was estimate how much this would cost the whole thing to, to get a professional to come in and do now someone's been quoted three and a half grand which I think is a bargain to be honest with you I'd say you're probably talking between eight and ten thousand pounds to get this done by someone else you know within a few months get it finished done and dusted in, in a short period of time if you've got the money by all means get it done um, but if you're on a budget and you don't have much money then you might want to take a bit of time doing it bit by bit if you've got a partner you know you've got a relationship where you've got a, a nice girlfriend that can help you out or you've got some helpful relatives that can help you I didn't have anyone that could help me out um, and some friends that are really good by all means you know use them um, you know the, the 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 having good friends means a lot you know and it can be, it can help you a lot in life um, unfortunately um, I've not had the greatest experience with friends you know some friends are low lives really so um, you know in my, in my book if someone isn't prepared to help you out from time to time they're not a good friend and you should get rid of them um, so Lee Cooty as I said he's got a five meter by seven meter um, garage like this so it should be fine um, my plan is to put plasterboard etc and have a pool table a bar event eventually sounds great really nice idea however don't use plasterboard my advice is the reason for that is garages suck up moisture uh, concrete su sucks up moisture it's porous just like stone it absorbs liquids material um, water vapor um, you know moisture it sucks it up so you need something as a barrier to stop that moisture now in hindsight I should have put a moisture barrier behind these walls and put it on the roof as well but you know you live and learn um, but yeah um, plasterboard isn't a great material because it's literally cardboard in it really and plaster and um, you know cardboard isn't very good for you know being resistant against water is it you know if you don't believe me just just get a piece of cardboard put it outside and um, just see how wet it gets when it rains it'll absorb water very quickly and unfortunately you'll end up seeing dark patches on the plasterboard in time even if you paint it and try and um, you know um, seal it you know it, it, it's not a great material to use so OBS plywood plywood is the best material to use OBS um, is similar but quite different to plywood plywood's obviously got about six layers in it and it's resistant to moisture OBS is sort of uh, I think just like chippings pressured together in a, um, at extreme pressure and then they use um, some sort of um, bonding agent to bond it together um, and it acts very similar to plywood plywood's always better though because it is more resistant to moisture so 
that rounds up all the questions that I've received from the various videos I've uploaded. I hope this video has been informative. Um, I didn't finish yet because I'm going to show you the metal uh, supports for the roof on and uh, I'll just go through that now for you. We'll just do a quick pan of the room so you can see what I've done. Hopefully this will be informative. There you see the pool table lights that I've put up. And the walls and the plug sockets we've got in there. We've even got a nice pool table light sign there. Coming round you can see we've got the dimmer lights there. And here is the uh, PVC window I installed. Now if we keep going round, this is the part I haven't finished because I want to put a um, side door in there. So we will have to get some professionals to come in and do that because there is an issue with the roof. So that's the area we want to finish. And if we keep going round, we've got this garage white door that is metal that we do need to insulate so I want to put a stud wall there once we've got the side door installed um, I have plywood all the way on the left side to the door as well as the roof is, is completely done as well now I just want to show you the, the roof as well because some people have asked about the plywood how it meets the actual support metal beams so I'm going to show you that in a bit, just a, a closer look so you get an idea on how I uh, have done that. Right, I just wanted to show you the support beams here on how the plywood rests against it. Now there is a small gap here of about 3mm, about half the width of my finger here. Now. These support beams have been put in by builders who decided not to square it off. So what you'll find is it's shifted a bit, you know, shifted a bit like that way, like a little bit. Um, so essentially it was basically shoving the plywood against it um, and then cutting it to size. You get a tape measure, measure it every 20 uh, centimetres along. Essentially, we've got a rafter running along there and another one further up near the light up here. Um, and we've just screwed in these boards in and we, we cut it to size um, and, and pushed it against the metal here. Um, generally speaking, the biggest gap we've got is about a centimetre and then it's about half a centimetre further up um, because what happens is uh, it seems to have uh, less of a gap for, at the top, but more of a gap at the bottom. Um, and as you can see, there's actually a bit of insulation board showing there. Um, so, you know, we do have a bit of a gap, but it's okay to have a bit of a gap, as long as it's not obvious. Um, and unless you've got super duper eyesight, you're probably not going to notice it. Um, but essentially, someone did ask about how I've done it against the metal supports so i'm going to take the camera and show it closer up so you guys can have a close look and i hope this update has been helpful um there will be a, a better video at some point when i've got it all finished um a, a completion video as it were but that's when i've got the funds to pay for the side door so here you can see we can see like the metal insulation the foil of the insulation there where uh, there's a bit of a gap and if we come closer here you can see that we've got a gap there as well um, but it's very small hardly noticeable from a different angle but you know I just wanted to show you how it's married up against the actual uh, metal because someone has asked and I did want to be very helpful and I hope this is informative. So essentially, it's trial and error, really. Um, my advice is to cut more, less than what you need. Put it up. If it doesn't quite fit, 
then cut a little bit more off until it fits because as I said these supports will not be square the builders will not have taken the time to make sure it's square um, and straight so you know my advice is do your best at getting it cut to the size you need um, and if, if it comes to it cut the woods if, if it's too much for you to handle on your own cut the wood in half and then you can always cut a little bit off if you don't quite fit um, or you could even get a belt sander and sand it down a little bit more if you just need a few mil off but I just wanted to help you out and show you what you need to do regarding lining it up on the roof just wanted to show you this area here where I decided not to use all the pieces of wood um, just used scraps um, because I didn't want to buy brand new pieces of wood so what you can do is you can cut it into sections and nail it up um, it's not ideal it's better to do it as one piece as you can see here I've used two smaller pieces to fit it um, and I just wanted to show you more or less that you can use smaller pieces just show you here again uh, we've used the scraps of pieces of the wood that I could use and, and put them up yeah it don't look that um, unsightly but it, it's more function than form you know so I just wanted to show you how I've put these pieces up I just wanted to show you the support beams how they're put onto the actual concrete panels and essentially you want to put wood against this underneath it let's say um, and then form it in around it so obviously it's flush against the wall um, and I just want to show you here this is the concrete panelled thing wall so this is the concrete panel wall you would basically attach your, your battens against there and I'll, I'll just, as you can see here we've got a uh, roofing bolt going through essentially you want to get a roofing bolt that's a bit longer than the one that's already there and put your wood up and then put your brackets on so you're going to put your bolt through there and through your piece of wood going through there that's your roofing bolt and then you've got your bracket small bracket now because it's straight on there you need to bend it a little bit in my first video I showed you how I did that but basically you have it like that another one like that and then you have your wood going down and a bolt through the wood and that's more or less how you attach your battens to your concrete panels so I hope this video was helpful um, I wanted to do an update because many questions have been asked and I wanted to address those questions and in terms of the only question I don't think I've answered is where the wood runs along the wall where I put my power sockets on. Um, I think that was about 1.5 metres long. Um, in hindsight, I wish I'd not made it quite as long because I did have a bit of an issue as someone's already asked about the plywood bowing because it's quite, quite big pieces that I put up and I had to resort to using some wood glue to try and glue it to the wall. Um, so I would recommend probably a distance no more than say a meter um, to stop plywood bowing because you're screwing the plywood in um, but if, it, if there's not much of something to screw into in terms of size you'll get that bow happening in plywood um, but you know hopefully what I've done will, will suffice and last a while um, but when I do have the funds to afford finishing this off I definitely do want to get it finished off because to be honest it does get a bit chilly in here even doing this video um, in the winter I can feel myself getting a bit cold um, so you know we do have some heaters in here you know to keep it warm I ain't got them on at the moment because I didn't really want to turn them on I didn't think I'd be doing this video for so long to be honest with you but um, you know if any of you guys got any more comments you know or more questions you've got regarding how about doing uh, how about doing this please let me know in the comments um, as I said it was an expensive project so do not take this lightly if you're going to 
take time to investigate it. My recommendation would be to watch the full video, which is an hour and 38 minutes. Yes, some parts of it, part, parts of it may be boring and I may rehash many things over and over as I did my vlogs over a year. Um, but, you know, please watch all of them, you know, because I'm hoping that some mistakes that I've made will help prevent you make the same mistakes, such as when I used the floor leveling compound in winter. If you're gonna use floor leveling compound, guys, do it in the summer. Um, hopefully that'll stop it cracking. Um, I'm not sure why it did that. If anyone wants to leave a, a comment why you thought the um, floor leveling compound cracked and I had to get rid of it all and put some concrete down instead, let me know in the comments um, because, you know, I, I made a mistake there. Anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate you subscribing to my channel, whether you like the photography stuff or this vi these videos that I've done about the conversion. Um, you know, and I hope to see you in the future. And, you know, keep safe. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.